Hello, and welcome to GM Flatgrass for the latest of Wire Mod Essentials. In this episode, we will be combining knowledge from episode 7 and 3 to make a missile which homes into a target automatically. Over here will be our command board. This is where we'll place our wire computer that will tell the missile where to go. The first thing we're going to need is the missile. The model name is PHXAARM. Place it without weld and with remove on explode unchecked. Damage should be 200 and range should be roughly 300. Okay, now that we have our missile placed, let's make it able to fly. So the first thing in that endeavor will be the thruster on the back. As we learned in episode 3, the mouse and weapons tutorial, the thrust on the back should be close to 25,000. So, let's go ahead and get the thruster out. Okay. As you see, the thruster's force is set to 25,000. The model can be anything you want, but I recommend a small thruster. Now forward momentum is down. Now all we need to do is add a thruster for steering. This plate at a spawn can be found in useful and explosive props. We'll be, use we'll be using it to place the vector thruster on, like so. The vector thruster has normal settings, that is XYZ world and 10,000 maximum force. Okay. Now no collide the small plate with the missile, and then the vector thruster with the missile, so that we can place them both inside of the nose cone, which gives us the same effect of placing the vector thruster on the end of the beam like we did in the last tutorial. Okay, now that they're in there, let's weld them. So weld both to the missile, like I'm doing now. Okay, now mechanically the missile is done. Now we just need to build up the software. The missile's weight is already set to 1. This is because there is an option in the, in the explosive settings that allows you to set the weight of the explosive. Now we're going to place a target finder. Notice the setting scheme. It's a scheme that allows you to scroll through the players with the large range and 30 bogeys. Okay, now that we have that placed, let's line up some components to use with the target finder. The first of these components will be an entity gate, specifically a gate entity name. This entity gate outputs the name of the player that you're targeting in a string format. We'll need this. Alright, now that we have that placed, let's place a gate entity position, which outputs the position on the world of the player you're targeting in the form of, ve of a vector. Speaking of vectors, we'll need to place a gate vector subtraction to compare the two vectors of the target and where the missile is, to get the angles for the vector thruster. That being said and done, let's move on to wiring. The first things we're going to wire are the entity gates. So wire entity from the name gate to the output of entity on the target finder, and do the exact same with the other entity gate. Now as you see, it's got my position, and it's got my name. Okay, let's move on to the vectors now. For the first vector, the A input, we're going to need the position of where the weapon is currently at. To do this, let's get out a wire GPS, to place on one of the rear fins of the missile, like so. Alright. Now, since we have that out, we can compare the two vectors. This is simple enough. Wiring A from the vector subtraction to the newly placed GPS and selecting the output of vector. We'll get the first vector position. For the second one, the B input, wire B from the vector subtraction to the entity position gate for the second vector input. Now since we have that done, let's go ahead and wire vector from the vector thruster to the vector subtraction to get that out of the way. Now the vector thruster is receiving the correct value, and we'll rotate the missile accordingly once we have it finished. Now you've noticed I haven't placed a beacon sensor. We're about to do that now. But this beacon sensor is a little different. This is the first time we've used a beacon sensor, and it will not be placed here. No. 
Instead, we're going to place it on the missile near the front. Right here on this plate here, the reason we're placing it in such a location is because we want the distance between the missile and the player. So, placing the beacon sensor on the missile, obviously, will give us that data. Now, for the input. Wire a target from the beacon sensor to the output 1 on the target finder. So, it's giving us the right data. Okay, now we'll need a detonation trigger for the explosive. To do this, get out a gate comparison less than, and place it right about there. Doesn't really matter where you place it. Okay, now we're going to need a constant value. Now, since our blast radius is about 300, let's place a constant value of 250, so it goes off when the player is within the blast radius. Makes sense, right? Okay. So, let's pull out the wire tool and wire A from the less than to the beacon sensor and it will automatically output distance so you don't need to click twice then wire B to the constant value basically we just made a trigger the less than will become 1 when I'm within 250 units of the missile okay now to display the name of the player you're targeting let's place the text screen this is why it was important that we placed an entity name gate earlier. You can have whatever settings you want, but 10 is a good size font. Alright, now wire string from the screen to the entity name gate. And there you go. There's the name of the player you're targeting. Now we need some controls. So, for the first control, let's place a button. And make sure this button is the standard value. 1 on, 0 off, non-toggle. This is the button we'll be using to scroll through targets. Okay, now wire one next target from the target finder to the button, so that when we press it, it finds the next player. Let's place the second button. This one will be toggled, one and zero, with the fire model, or any other model you see fit. Alright, what this button will do is send 1 or 0 to the thrusters on the missile. So, to do this, wire mole from the vector thruster to the button, and then go around back and wire A from the thruster to the button. Now, we need to give it a fuse. Earlier, we discussed the less than triggering the missile. So what we need to do is wire detonate from the missile to the less than. And I recommend standing back to do this unless you want to get blown up. Now when we get in range, the less than will become 1, and detonate will see the value 1 and blow the missile up. Let's see how this works. Pretty well. Now let's go to multiplayer and try it out. Here we are at the Gecko Build server. One of my favorite build servers on Gary's Mod. There over there is the humble admin, Ray. Now here's a missile. I've placed the controls inside the bunker. And the missile's unfrozen. We're ready to fire. So let's step inside our little control bunker here. And scroll through the players. My target will be Zombie Freak. Let's see where he is. Now that we have him targeted, let's fire. It's super effective! Thank you for your help, Zombie Freak. It was much appreciated. Well, that's a wrap for this tutorial. But we have a little bit of time left. So enjoy this montage of fiery and explosive death.
Thanks for watching, guys. And of course, I hope this helped.